Welcome to Look at Him. I'm so glad that you are joining us in worship today. My name is Jennifer Tapia. This is my amazing husband and pastor, Shane Tapia. Hello, everybody. Welcome. Amen. So welcome to Look at Him. Today, we are going to talk about something that is extremely important to the Lord. And we're going to talk about His tabernacle, which is His secret place. Mm. Let's open up in prayer. Amen. Father, we come before you right now in Jesus' mighty name. God, we thank you so much for everything that you have given us. We thank you for the breath in our lungs. We thank you for the food that we eat. We thank you for the clothes we wear. And we thank you for your awesome presence, your awesome spirit, the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for King Jesus, your son who died on the cross for us, Lord. We pray that you would be glorified through this show and everybody listening would come closer to you, God. Have your way. Remove us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. So the verse that we're going to focus on today is in Psalms, and it's going to be Psalms chapter 27, verses 1 through 8. Would you like me to start reading? Yes, please. Okay, so verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. You can finish up to eight. Okay, great. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. And now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face. My heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Mm. Amen. We see right here, David's talking about the tabernacle of God. And in the beginning of this chapter of Psalms 27, David says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? So the first thing that we find out in the tabernacle is that God is the light of your life. God is shining in his tabernacle through and for you. He is also the salvation. So in the house of God, in the tent of God, in Jesus, do we have light and we have salvation. We will fear nobody but God and God alone. When we live in the tabernacle, when we live in the tent, when we live under and in Jesus, we fear nobody but God. Continuing, the Lord is the strength of my life, of whom such shall I be afraid? God is our very strength. I know there's been times where you feel like you can't keep going on. Life comes, something happens, something that can completely tear you apart, and yeah. you feel weak. Mm -hmm. But in the tabernacle of God, God begins to strengthen you. God begins to renew your hope. God begins to give you a new fresh outlook on life and gives you the ability to move forward. Continuing verse two, it says, when the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So when we live in the tabernacle of God, when we live with Jesus, those that come against us, we can be confident that they will stumble and fall. Because if you think about a tabernacle, it's a tent. But in order for you to get anywhere near that tent, you have to come close to it. And if you have to come close to God and God's people, we can have confidence and faith that God already knows what's coming from afar. God can take care of those problems and those issues that are coming from afar with his presence, with his truth. 
Continuing, it says, Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. So he's writing in the tabernacle, in Christ Jesus, no matter what comes against you, we will be confident in God. This is something that we have to have inside of us that is unshakable. That when we have this developed relationship with God that is so deep, nothing is going to come against us. So the Father in this tabernacle, his tabernacle, this secret place, is a place we can be confident about. We can place our confidence in the Lord. Correct. Correct. Amen. Continuing verse 4, it says, One thing I have desired of the Lord. That will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David is saying one thing that I do desire of the Lord in his secret place is that I would be able to be in his house all the days of my life, that I would behold the beauty and inquire in his in temple. So David is saying, one, he knows how beautiful God is. And he knows, two, that he just wants to be in the house of God. He wants to be in the tabernacle with God. For us, we want to be in Jesus. We want to be where Jesus is at. We want Jesus to dwell inside of us because he is the kingdom of heaven. And it says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. And so dwell means to sit, to abide to continue in. Mm -hmm. So that means we want to stay there. We don't want to leave. We want to actually sit. We want to rest in his presence. We want to rest in his tabernacle and stay, abide in that secret place. Abide in Jesus. He will abide in you. Mm -hmm. So the secret place is a very special place with you and the Father. So I'm going to continue on verse 5. So verse 5 for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. We know that pavilion is, is shelter. So this tabernacle, God's tabernacle is a shelter for us. It's a place of protection, like Shane was um, explaining. It says that in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock. So when we spend our time in his tabernacle, we are placed on a good foundation. Mm. We're in the house of the Lord. We built a house upon good foundation, a foundation of Christ, a foundation where he will not suffer the righteous to be moved, a foundation that is strong, a foundation that God wants us to be on, where we can stand. The word says stand. And the only way we're going to have that confidence or that ability to stand in this life is to go into the secret place to enter into his tabernacle and it's his tabernacle. So it's a place that we enter into. It's not a place that he comes mm -hmm. and enters in. We have to enter into his tabernacle. Yeah, that's right. When we enter into his tabernacle, we are able to put ourselves away because so many people want God to come where they're at, but God's not a follower of man. God follows no man. We follow God. So when we go into his tabernacle, it straightens us out. It gives us the ability to properly position ourselves and say, hey, we are in the house of the Lord. And Jennifer was saying the secret place. So verse five, it says, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion in the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? He shall sh set me up upon the rock. So the house of the Lord, the tabernacle, Christ is also known as the secret place of God. Mm -hmm. We get to be in this secret place with the Lord. So verse six, it says, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. So what does this tell us? It tells us that this secret place in his tabernacle is a place of worship. Mm. It's a place where we sacrifice ourselves to worship our king. Mm. It's a place of repentance because that is worship. It's laying our lives down. It's us being that living sacrifice. It's a place where 
we give him joy and thanksgiving. The word says we enter his gates with thanksgiving and praise. Mm. So David is talking here. He's entering the secret place. He's entering the tabernacle, but he's entering with thanksgiving and praise, with joy and with singing. I had a, I had a, a like a picture or a vision when you were speaking of that, of literally a tent, and he says, "I um, therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yeah, I will sing praises unto the Lord." So wherever we go, we can literally carry the tabernacle type of lifestyle because whatever situation we come in, we're going to sacrifice our praises of joy and say, God, no matter what's going on, I give you praise because I know when I am in your house, when I am dead and gone from the flesh, that I will be in your presence. I will be in your tabernacle and there I will continuously be praising. So right now, because I know you are good, because I trust in your presence, I will give you praise right now, even no matter what what's going on so we can literally um inhabit this lifestyle of always living in the tabernacle by wherever you're at if you're at a place and you come across someone that's not treating you well or someone that likes to use you abuse you whatever it may be you step into the tabernacle in your spirit with the Lord mm -hmm. and you allow him to be your home in that situation and you allow him to lead you in or out wherever to go. We're not by ourselves. So you're saying in camp with the Lord. In camp with the Lord. Let him in camp with you. Amen. Dwell with the Lord. Yes. Abide in the Lord. Continue with the Lord. Mm -hmm. Stay steadfast in the Lord. Amen. In that secret place. And so continuing verse seven, it says here, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. Mm. So we entered the secret place with thanksgiving and praise. We gave him our sacrifices of joy. Then David is saying, when I cry with my voice. So we have to cry out to the Lord. We're crying out not for our wills to be done, but for his will to be done, for we're in his tabernacle. So we're crying out that our lives will reflect the life he desires, that what we give is what he desires to give, what we say is what he desires to say, that our hearts are filled with what he desires to fill our hearts with, and that's Christ. Mm. He desires for us to be his tabernacle. Mm. And I love how David says, hear. So he's asking God to hear, O oh Lord, when I cry with my voice. So let's look at that picture. David is literally laying himself in a vulnerable, posi vulnerable position where he is crying out to the Lord. Where he is saying, God, he's pleading to God. And he says, have mercy on me. So he's asking God to have mercy on him. He's not just saying, God, please have mercy on me. Mm -hmm. He says he's crying. So when you're crying for something, when you're pleading for something, it's taking everything inside of you because you want that thing to answer you so bad. In this case, we want God to hear us so bad. We are so desperate for the Lord. David is showing us the type of characteristic that is getting God's attention. Because I could live a life that says, oh, yeah, God, I pray that you just have your way in my life. I pray that you have your hand upon me. All right, I'm going to go do my thing. Or I could understand and realize what an honor and what a blessing it is for God's hand to be in my life. I don't take for granted when God moves. I don't take for granted when he speaks. And if I have, I ask for forgiveness, Lord. So he says, have mercy also upon me and answer me. So David compares mercy from the Lord by him speaking to him. Can you believe the understanding that David had who he was to God compared to God? David was saying God having mercy was just God speaking to him. Because God does, doesn't have to speak to him. Oof. No, we he doesn't. We don't deserve to hear him. Mm -mm. We don't deserve that he would send his one and only begotten son to die for us on a cross. Right. To be resurrected so that we can live in him. We don't deserve that. 
Mm. We don't deserve anything. We don't deserve the blessings that it gives, the possessions that we have, the food that we eat. We don't even, even deserve this place. Right. We don't deserve this, this Facebook, um, social media, this video, the cameras. We don't deserve any of this. Mm -hmm. We don't deserve him. But he loves us so much that he gives us a place to give us his presence. So we learn that David, speaking of the tabernacle of God, is that we learn a character that a character a, a stance that we should stand in. So God had to humble me a lot. <laughs> he had to humble me a lot for my thinking towards God, because when I finally began to learn the truth about God, I finally put my head down and reverenced the God, reverenced God. What does reverence mean? Highly respect. Highly esteem. When God comes around, I am going to show the most respect that I possibly can. Amen. Because I care so much that he is here. He is the number one in our hearts. So we're learning that we got to respect and reverence God. And if we don't, it's okay. Be honest with God and say, I don't feel this way towards you that they're talking about. I don't even care if you come or you speak to me. If that's where you're currently at, that's okay. Be honest with God and tell them, I want to truly know you. I want to know what the psalmist David is talking about. I want to know what these people are talking about. Why do they have such a reverence for you? And ask God to show you. Because it's not our jobs to show. And, and God wants to show you and it's in that secret place where he does that. He will reveal himself to you. And from... Personal experience when God shows up, it is very humbling yeah. because the Bible says we are nothing but dust. Mm. And when the creator of all things decides to show up with his presence, it is like nothing else in the whole entire world. I will leave everything. I'll leave my wife. I will leave my kids. I will leave everything for him to show up because yes, I love them. I love them dearly. But I know in the end, if I don't love him as number one, I will lose them. Mm. And they can never give me what he gives me. And that's a sustained life. That's the breath in my lungs. He made us individually to be in this relationship with him and him alone. And that reverence that you're, that you're displaying even now that you're talking about is what David says in verse 8. He says, when thou saidest, seek my face. So when God said, seek my face, mm. David says, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Mm. So he reverenced the Lord so much that he heard God's command and he followed God's command. Mm. The Lord said, seek my face. And without even a doubt, David says, thy face, Lord, will I seek. So how many times when God speaks to us, and I'm guilty of this, God will say, go and pray right now, and I don't do it. I'm missing out on the presence of God. We could be missing out on a move of God in our life because of what? Laziness? Because we don't want to get up and get off of our phones or get off of Netflix or whatever it may be. Yeah, the Lord's saying, seek my face, seek my face. And he says, Jennifer, get up, seek my face. He has something he, he wants to tell me. Right. Something he wants to show me. Something more, more of him he wants to give me. And because I'm sleepy or because I decide I want to talk on the phone or whatever else it might be, you know, even my kids, I let them take precedence over the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that's something that we cannot do. We have to actively seek his face. We have to actively prioritize and seek his tabernacle, the secret place. And if you think about it, David didn't have what we have. David didn't have Jesus already on the cross die for our sins. See, in those days, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit would come upon people. After Jesus died, Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to fill us. We have this continuous movement. We've been blessed with Jesus already on the cross. David had to wait for the Lord to speak. Now because of Jesus, the Lord is speaking through his Holy Spirit. But I feel like we in the age that we are take it for granted. 
We're so consumed with everything else in this world. The, you know, if you go on TV, if you go on news, who is talking about the things of God? Who is talking about a tabernacle? Who is talking about the secret place? Who is talking about you getting close to God? The world doesn't want God to be glorified. The world wants to glorify itself. Dev the devil wants everybody to look away from God. Look at themselves. Look at what they can gain. Look at how they look on Instagram. Whatever it may be. Even in the church, a lot of times, we don't get that message. Right. We get messages of looking at the self. Mm -hmm. How we can gain from things. How we can get what blessed. Is, yeah. What does God want us to do in our life so that our lives can be the way that we want them to be? What should we pray to God about so that we can get the things that we want? What should we, 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 we? Where is the generation of people that will rise up for the one true living God? Think about it back in the days in the Old Testament where the prophets literally gave everything, were hated by people because they were giving the word of God to people saying, straighten out your lives, straighten out the way you live, stop walking that way and walk towards God. It was rough. It wasn't a walk in the park. But why did God send those words? Because he loved his people and he wanted them to turn from their wicked ways and turn unto him. The message is still the same today. Except the only difference is, is that we have Christ that has died for our sins. So it's now turn away from your wicked ways and turn unto my son Jesus. And allow him to fill your life. Pick up your cross daily and follow after him. The very last verse in Psalms 27, verse 14, it says, Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Mm -hmm. I think what happens nowadays is we are in a generation where people do not have patience. Mm -hmm. They're so impatient. If the Lord says, wait on me, and we don't get an answer right after we pray oh jesus please do this for me oh jesus what is your will for my life oh jesus what's gonna happen next oh jesus help me understand this oh jesus why did this you know blah 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 we say all this and we don't get an answer within a minute a day even a week can pass by or a month what do we do we give up on the lord mm -hmm. we give up on christ and we decide to to use false discernment or listen to other things and we we begin to idolize other things and people to get the answers that we want that make us feel comfortable mm -hmm. but the holy spirit is the comforter which means he is our counselor which means he gives us the wise counsel so if the lord says to wait then we have to wait because he has that answer mm -hmm. for us he has what we're looking for he will decipher it for us because he has the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that he wants to give us. We and, have to filter things through Christ. And waiting also puts us back. I'm, I'm, we consistently talk about this type of character. Waiting, when it is instilled into our life, it is adapting and adopting the character of knowing and trusting that God will speak when he decides to speak. Mm. See, if you don't wait and you get and you lose patience and you leave, you were never caring about what God was going to say or when he was going to say. You were only caring about what you would hear from God and when you would hear it from God. So when your patience is up, you go and you leave. When my patience is up, I go and I leave. We got to change from that. We got to be the people. We got to be that peculiar people that get God on the rightful throne in our hearts and say, I will not move until the Lord speaks. It's like when a parent puts a child on time out. Mm -hmm. You say, do not move until I say go. There's a reason for this. This discipline, there's a reason. Do not move until I say get up. Right. That, you know, when the child listens... That is what God wants us to do when he says, wait on me. We need to dwell and abide in that place so that we stay, that we continue in him. And we don't move. We don't leave because we'll leave too early. Mm -hmm. And going back to the very beginning, David says, it is his tabernacle. Mm. It is his pavilion. It is his secret place. It's his. Everything is his. Our lives are his. 
Our patience is His. Our desires is His. Our hearts is His. Everything that we have, the proper way is to say, God, have it. Because Christ, His life down here on earth, it wasn't His own. It was the will of God that he would come and die on the cross for the salvation of of the sins of the world for anybody that would call upon the name of Jesus. And I just want to say this. When you go into the tabernacle, into the house of God, when you begin to seek out the secret place of the Lord, you begin to become radically changed for God. Mm -hmm. And you you begin to become radically filled by God. There is nothing greater than being filled with the presence of God, with the Spirit of God, with Christ. You become one with Him. Now we are all continuously working out our own soul salvation until the day that Christ decides to come back. The way we look at it is, hey, Why don't we give our very, very best just like Jesus gave his very, very best while he had life down here on earth? Because there will be a time when the master comes and there will be either servants that were messing around and doing wicked stuff or there will be servants that are on lookout waiting for the king to rightfully return. What servant will we be? Will we be in the house of the Lord, the tabernacle of the Lord, or will we be in the house of the enemy, the house of ourselves? Amen. So we're going to end this with some prayer. I feel the Lord asking if there is anybody that wants to accept the Lord right now, you just repeat this prayer. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and master, repeat this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, thank you for my life. I believe that you are the son of God and I ask for forgiveness of my sins. I ask that you would be the master of my life and I thank you for this gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Now we're going to pray for you guys. Father, right now in Jesus' mighty name, I pray that your Holy Spirit would lead your people into your secret place. You would lead your people into your tabernacle. You would lead your people to know and understand your ways. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them. I pray, Lord, that you would strip them from the ways of the world. You would strip them from self. And I pray this for us as well, God, that we would continue to work work towards your presence coming. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.